Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. This one's a bit special because I've come down to Silverstone. We're in the wing, and this is where Silverstone Auctions are having their big flagship sale. It's during the classic weekend at Silverstone, the big event here. Um, coming up this weekend, it's July the 21st and 22nd is when the sale is. There's 120 cars in this auction, and I've come down on setup day, it's Wednesday today, just to have a look at some of the stars in the auction. And I'm gonna pick out 10 cars in particular that I think are of a special interest. And I think you should be bidding on them, and you'll probably stop me buying them instead. So go outside, let's go and have a look at the cars now. Okay, I've pulled out this Alain. This is an Alain an S3, so this is a 1967 Alain. Um, this particular type of car, you normally see the Sprint version, and you normally see them in drophead version. Two things make this rare. It's a coupe, and it's an S3 SE. And this is like the connoisseur's Alain, because this is a, still had a higher horsepower, 118 horsepower, around 126 for the Sprint. It's a beautiful restoration on this and it has original steel wheels. I love the way it's painted correct silver for the bumper. And if you go round, you just notice that the wheel uh, at the rear, they don't have an extended arch. It's just a more delicate look. And I think this is probably the best looking Alain of them all. Inside, you also didn't get the rocker switches you used to get in the Alain Sprint. There's delicate little um, flick levers on this. Black seal, I can see is correct. The chrome seal on the there, silver wheels. When you're looking at a land, what you look for these original wheels, these elongate these holes if they've been driven quite hard. These are all absolutely tight on there. The pegs just come out of restoration, and this one is guided at 30 to 35,000. If you wanted a sprint in this sort of condition, you're paying 50,000 plus, and the drive isn't that uh, different really. So a really special Alain, nice one. I'd like, I can't wait to see what this makes in the sale. Okay, first car I've picked out is this Porsche 930. This is the original Porsche Turbo, came out in 75 and 3 litre four, grew to 3.3 litre, and in the final year, which is this one, a 1989 example, it got the G50, the five-speed gearbox, it's had a four-speed up to now. This colour is linen. Um, what I like about this car, it's come direct from an owner who's owned it for 23 years. Super original. Some of the things I look for if I was looking at this to buy one of these. I like, I like the way the little stone chip has been touched in. This car, that tells me this car hasn't been pampered and really prepped before sale, because then it might hide something. I look at the super tight shut lines on here. Check the other side as well. That tells you it hasn't had any damage. Colour coded wheels. Um, that was an option in the day. I love these 930s for this design detail where you have this sharp fin coming up here, very distinctive. There's an SE in this sale, also a 1988 car. That was a premium at time in 1989, and they got a vent there. Um, they're even more expensive. This one is guided at 120 to 150,000. I'll quickly go around the other side, just pop the bonnets and show you some, some more details. Around here, all 911s are the same. If you actually want to look at the engine, you pop that one, and then there's one down here for the front bonnet. We'll go around to the back first. Before you lift a 930 turbo, you always put the wiper blade up. Very distinctive rear spoiler. There's the little intercooler. There's the air uh, conditioning. I'm looking to see if it's dry, no oil leaks. There aren't any oil leaks on this one. So really nice condition, and it's all got the standard stickers as well. Around the front, there's a little giveaway it's worth knowing about. There it is, right. First thing I see, it's got the original pump and the toolkits here. This is super rare, still have the air gauge. Everybody sort of steals those when they own one, and gloves. The carpets never fit particularly well in all Porsche 930s, that's normal, but there's a sticker up there, and I, if you know the codes, just Google it. That'll tell you the options this car was fitted from, from new. So, really nice example. Being the G50, it won't be cheap. This is guided at 120 to 150, so quite a premium for that five-speed gearbox. It does make it more accelerative than the four-speed because you're not caught with sort of turbo lag between the gears. So nice example, I expect that to sell very well. Right, let's go and have a look at a different sort of car. Okay, here's the next car. This is a bit of a uh, favorite of mine. This is a 1990 M3 Sport Evolution. This is the 2.5 liter version of the E30 M3 that came out final edition. Um, I lusted after one of these in period. I actually had an, an E30 M3 for a while. And this one just added that 
bit of horsepower that it always required. The M3 always felt slightly lacking in horsepower. This is the one that did the business. They were collectible from the start. I look at these as a future classic. They're already um, up in the, yeah, the prices have increased on them, but it was super rare and they were always special, even when they came out. So they went to good homes. I want to show you the inside of this car because that was the big difference. Apart from the 2.5 litre engine, inside you gain these wonderful Recaro seats. You've got these winged Recaro seats and this, this has got the optional um, lever upholstery and the flash of motorsport. You also got red seat belts, of course, and a suede wheel and a suede um, gear stick. At the back, you just got an extra spoiler as well for added downforce when you come in, uh, into Hangar Straight. So a great example, it's come in from Germany, 120,000 uh, kilometers, about 80,000 miles, this example. I wouldn't worry, I'd buy on condition on these cars. This looks tip top condition, guided at around 80,000 pounds. I bet it makes that as well. Right, so another one, very similar car here, and that's the Mercedes 190E Evolution, rare car. Well, here's a super rare car over here in the UK, the Mercedes Evolution 2.5 16 valve, this homologation special when BMW and Mercedes are going neck and neck. This is 92, this was, this was Mercedes' answer to that M3 Sport Evolution we saw outside, increased engine, and also this crazy uh, dynamic, uh, sorry, aero pack, see on that screen down there, and this wide wing and the tail here, that was all to reduce drag. Drag went down to 3.32 uh, with this car. What I find amazing with these particular cars, there's there's no AMG, this is pre-AMG, but it was head-to-head -head European wide battle on the racetracks and they had to do these homologation specials. This car is low mileage, about 30,000 miles, come in from Switzerland, um, a real fine, yes it's expenses, about 130 to 150,000 pounds, but this would be my pick of the three car, these ro uh, road races for the road of the 90s, this is my pick, can't wait to see what it makes in the sale. Another one of my favourite cars, the Ford GT. This was built to celebrate Ford's centenary year and uh, they did it in style with this car. Obviously a remake of the original Ford, uh, GT40. Ford GT, supercharged V8. What I particularly like about this, it's like an overgrown Elise. It's a manual gearbox, aluminium chassis, supercharged V8, known for the reliability. This car is a one owner car, 5,800 5, miles. It was a US car, came across here when it was brand new, prepared to roust to European spec um, and one owner since it, it first hit the road in the UK. Um, what, what you've got to watch with these cars is they're really usable, but you've got to have a good garage to park them in because you've always got to open, be able to open the door right open so you don't hit your head on there when you get in. Why I think these are special, this is a 600 horsepower near enough manual super uh, car. The only other one is a Carrera GT. Everything is paddle shift. I think those will be very special in the future, these cars. Yes, they made 4,000 of them. That's why the values are lower. But at 200,000 pounds, this is a real statement car. And I'm sure it'll make all the money in the sale come Saturday. Well, now we've got the Ford Sierra RS500, the last edition one. This is car number 38 of the final 500 run. Amazing history on this one. Gent bought it six months old and it's been in the same family ever since and a mere 10,000 miles from new. We passed through the family, I can see a part of the original tyres over there. Love these road races for the road. These values of these have gone shooting up in recent times, but they're very special cars. And in this sale I have the M3 Evolution here and then that Mercedes. What a trio of touring car magic, these road cars um, that are real race cars, homologation specials. Original uh, all the way through this car, unrestored, quite a fine, guided around the £100,000 mark. Remarkable how the value's gone up, but a real steal with that sort of history. That's why it's worth that sort of money. Right, this one caught my eye. This is the BMW 2002 Turbo. Very distinctive with those motorsport stripes on it. Just produced for a tiny time, just over a year it was produced. 1,600 examples were built. Very few survive today. This one has been in single ownership since 1993. And I look inside and it's all original carpet, seats, etc. Just the wheels being changed. I mean, they were extraordinary cars, well known for incredible turbo lag. That's why the turbo has been changed on this one, but the original turbo is with it. Um, 
it needs a little bit of tidying, but to find one as solid as this and a fairly attractive guide price at 65 to 70,000 pounds, I think that's a real buy and someone's really going to enjoy this car in the future. Well, I had to bring this one out. This is a 1975 Range Rover Classic. What makes it particularly special, it was first delivered to the Royal Household. This is a Royal Range Rover and it, is, it was found a few years ago and then has been beautifully restored. And I think once they found out it was a Royal car, they really spent some money on it, well over 60,000. And I, it is utterly pin from um, front to the back, everything original. They always used to have the full size um, sunroof as well on their cars. Lincoln green, this color, really suits Range Rover uh, really nicely. This, this one has a bit of carpet inside, so it's slightly posher than the super original suffix A ones, and it would be my choice, got radio in it, etc. Owner did the restoration, drove it to Tuscany and back, and has put it in the sale. Real find, yes, it, it would be expensive guided at 70, 75,000, but these cars are only going one way, and to find one in this condition, you couldn't actually replicate it, you couldn't restore it for that, so I think this is a strong buy in this sale. Okay, this time we've got a Porsche GT3 RS. Now, this is the 997 version. For some people, they like this uh, ultimate GT3. When they went to 991, the car got bigger, it got electric steering. And the top model of this is the 4-litre version, Super Limited. But this is as near as you can get to it. And I like this example. I like its colour combination. And I also like that inside it hasn't got the club sport, hasn't got the big roll cage in there and the belts. It's got conventional belts in it. It's come in from Germany, so it's left-hand drive. A little bit in its history, it did have an engine change at 24,000 uh, kilometers. That means it's guided really sensibly, 110 to 130,000 miles. If you want the car for driving, then I think this is the one. It's the pinnacle for me of GT3. Being the Gen 2, rare car, don't be put off by left-hand drive. How are you gonna use this car? Great find, looking forward to see what it sells for. Okay, well, where's one of these muscle Astons from the 80s? This is the 1987 Vantage Volante with X-Pack. Very rarely seen with X-Pack, these Volantes. Only 166 Volantes built. How many with X-Pack? Few know, but just a handful. What um, X-Pack added was they opened up the carburetors, they put straight through pipes on it, so you get the real raucous noise. I love the look of these Volantes. I love the uh, blocked-in grille at the back. They are true 80s statements. And in this period, of Aston they were hand built at Newport Pagnell this particular car the guys owned it since 1990 so almost from new he kept it in store he kept um, up the service until about 2000 so it it's well prepared just needs a little bit more preparation if you're going to go on that European drive and that's why it's guided very sensibly at about 280 to 320,000 but in the future because they've built in such few numbers and the great color combination on this and right hand drive I think this is actually a really good buy at that sort of value. Okay, well here's the Mercedes 300 SL from 1958. This is the most expensive car on the sale here, guided at seven to 800,000 pounds. But it was such a tour de force, this Mercedes. It was obviously in gold wing coupe form, or you could get it in this roadster form. It had a straight six engine, mechanical fuel injection, powered brakes, so ahead of its time, 160 mile an hour top speed as well. Um, this car originally developed, uh, delivered to the America and came into the UK in 1999. And the guy who brought it in has owned it ever since. Meticulously serviced, used it on tours, used it properly. It's um, done 89,000 miles from you. I've looked around it. It is utterly Fork 3, an all original engine, gearbox, everything matches. So this is going to be a big sale. Kai's owned it for 18 years. It's been, he's loved it all the way through and now it's going on to its next owner. Had to pick this one out. This is one of my favourite Porsche turbos. This is the 964, but the 3.6 litre version. This came out right at the end of production and the power went up to 360 horsepower. Um, two wheel drive only. This was the absolute limit in its, in its day. This car is, was a Sultan Brunei car. Apparently out of the 159 right hand drive cars, he bought 30 of them, madness. Um, but that was the 80s for you, well 93. This car is um, 20,000 miles from new, been owned by a gent, he's really looked after it. I can't fault it, I love the combination of the white and the light interior, and Sultan and I always spec ev everything on the options list as well. So a great car, they're expensive because they're rare and sought after, it's a 190 to 220 guide.
and I'm sure it will hit that guide very easily. I had to include this one, this is the Ferrari 246 GTS. I just think they're such a pretty car, these. Famously without the Ferrari badge on the front with a Dino badge. This car, 1972, um, GTS means it's got the Targa top um, that's removable. And it's, this car has lived a life because it's, um, you know, you forget how old these cars are. In the early age, the guy who used to run it, he really drove it, did about 30,000 miles and included doing track days in it. So in this history file, it has been at Cadwell, Snesham and that sort of thing. Current owner, I think he was 2008, he bought it um, and he did a, um, some work on it and really brought it up to the uh, condition you see here. These cars are all about being beautiful and the way they um, they look. The little sweet V6 in them sings up to 7,500 RPM, that, but they are expensive. This one's guided at 270 to 320, but it's very nicely presented and be really interested to see what it makes in the sale. Here's one of my favourite 60s coupes, Maserati Ghibli 4.7, designed by Tesorio when he was at um, Gear Design, one of his favourite cars he ever penned, he told me once. But it, look at the elegant lines on it. It was against the Ferrari Daytona at the time. This car, this version has a 4.7, uh, 4 let's say, 306 horsepower V8 engine. This was the pinnacle of the sort of GT class and cruising down to Monaco. It's that sort of car. And this particular example is only nine and a half thousand miles from new, they tell me, and unusually with an automatic gearbox. I've not seen one of these with an automatic gearbox, but it's all gone through Bill McGrath. It's had a, a body um, back to metal respray and it looks like a retrim in it, beautifully presented and guided at 170 to 190,000. That makes it about a third of a price of a Daytona. So I think these are still on the rise. They've got a way to go, and this is a very nice example. Well, I hope you enjoyed that quick guide tour around my 10 star lots at this sale. I could spend all day here with 120 lots. I couldn't go around them all. If you have enjoyed the sale, we are interested in some of the cars. Remember, you need to register to bid. You do that on silverstoneauctions.com. The sale, first sale is Saturday the 21st, starts at 2.30, and then another sale on Sunday the 22nd, again, 2.30 start. Going to be fascinated to see what these cars make in the auction. It's always a great theater to see what they do. Um, live sale, when the hammer comes down the car is sold you have to pay a 15% commission you have to remember that if you're going to bid on a car but these cars are all going on to their next home their next adventures I hope you've enjoyed this video I want to do more of these in the future if you have enjoyed the video keep watching keep subscribing more videos coming along very soon